Hello, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us today. We're really looking forward to an exciting discussion with all of you. Um, as everybody is getting familiar with their uh, GoTo uh, webinar, you can utilize the chat and poll question um, features that we have in that platform. So if anybody would like to shout out where they're uh, joining us from today, feel free to do so. But otherwise, um, we have a couple other housekeeping items before we get started. We're really excited and happy to partner with ACS Technologies and discuss how background screening protects your church and staff, as well as volunteers and other members of your church. This recording, we uh, will also be recording this webinar and we'll be sending out a recording of that to you when we're done. And don't forget, again, to use that question functionality. We will be happy to answer any questions that you do have for us along the way. We do also have um, some time to answer those questions specifically. So let's go ahead and get started. We'll do some uh, introductions. My name is Stephanie Komnick. I am the supervisor here over the partner management team at Verified First. I have previously managed the ACS technologies relationship, including ministry platform. I'm also joined by my colleague, Veronica Garcia. Veronica, I'm really excited to have you here today. Thanks, Stephanie. I'm happy to be here too. Um, I am the fortunate senior partner manager here at Verified First overseeing the partnership that we have with ACS technologies and I'm really looking forward to this discussion today. Awesome. All right, so before we dive in, let's give a, a little overview about Verified First. We have been partnered with ACS Technologies for a little over five years now, and we have uh, roughly around 1,300 mutual clients. Our goal really is to provide the easiest and most efficient way for you guys to be able to effectively screen your volunteers and employees. And those are things like background checks, drug screening, and verifications, all from within the ministry platform solution. So that way you guys can really just continue to focus on your church mission. So let's take a look exactly what we're going to uh, cover today. Yes, so today we will be discussing the importance and significant impact of employee and volunteer background screening what the best practices are to ensure the highest level of, of protection for your organization. And also we will wrap it up with a walkthrough of the Verified First integration with ministry platform. So really exciting stuff. Yes, definitely. Okay, so let's talk about the reality of what churches are doing. The good news is a large amount of churches are screening their staff and volunteers. The not so good news is 40% of them are not requesting background checks that provide real time data. So what we mean by that is that they are most likely going to databases that are not continuously being updated by the counties and states. And to add to that, not all counties and states are required to report information to those national databases. So that's where there is some potential uh, gaps and, and missing information there. However, there are some searches that can be done to help fill in those gaps, and we'll talk about those a little bit later as well. Now, before we continue the discussion, we'd love to hear from you guys with a quick little poll question. So that question is, do you currently have a background screening policy for your staff and volunte volunteers? And we will go ahead and launch that poll question. It should pop up for you on the screen here in just a moment and you can select all that apply. So we'll take a few moments for people to read the options and give some feedback, but we'd love to just uh, see what people are doing that way we can help support you guys if needed. So we'll give that just a few more moments here. I always, I always feel like it's a guessing game on what the responses are gonna be, but. Hopefully it will be yes. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yes, for sure. All right, I think we have pretty much all of uh, the responses there. So we'll close that out. Thank you guys so much again for for your response there, but let's keep going in with, uh, or keep going on rather with um, some further information. Let me see here. Perfect. So whether or not your background screening policy can use a little updating, let's uh, also take a look at the significance of background screening your volunteers. Oh, I think I might have clicked. Oh, I didn't. There we go. 
All right. Um, so here we have somewhat of an interesting picture to paint. Um, so if you look here on the slide, we have a few stats for you, starting with 32% of all volunteers in America are involved in religious organizations. I think that's a great statistic. I think we would love to see that grow as well. And then moving on to the second one, almost half on average of weekend church worship attendees are regularly serving as a volunteer, which is also something to be really proud of. And I'm sure churches wanna see that number continue to grow over time as well. But the concerning part of this is that one in three adults in America have a criminal record. Now, while we wanna believe that our organization is safe from harm, the reality is that there is always risk. Having a background screening policy for your staff and volunteers will help with making decisions that protect your church so that everyone can focus on what really matters, which is worship. You may be asking how a background check will help or maybe even what a background check is. So let's get into a little bit of that now too. Yes, definitely. So um, even though the slide is asking what is a background check, it might also be worth asking why background check? And really that answer is uh, to provide a comprehensive picture of a person's life inside and outside of the church. It's really just a trustworthy method to vet out the volunteers before they serve. And that's gonna better protect your ministry, your people and your mission. Uh, I, I know that um, churches are often viewed as, as a very like trusting and safe place, which I, I do believe that fact, but unfortunately there is that reality uh, that you know some people do have a past that they may may not be proud of. And so uh, you know making it just still a, a priority and, and almost a requirement that you are committed to protecting everybody, um, the background check can just be a piece of that. <clears throat> and so then you may ask yourself, what does a background check screen for? And it really does depend on the type of background check you're needing for that volunteer position. But at a high level, it's going to show you things like previous convictions. It can also confirm someone's identity, such as um, an employment verification. So if you're looking to hire someone for staff and they uh, have some employment, previous employment information on there, a background check can help confirm that. And it can also help attest to the overall character of that person, such as running a personal reference check as well. So all of these things are going to ensure that you're finding the right volunteer or employee for your church and the ministries. And then that way you can feel confident that you're protecting everyone that attends your services each week. And that's great. So now let's talk about some screening best practices. It's really not enough to run a background check just to check the box. Background screening should be intentional, just as your efforts in other areas to create a safe and, and um, comfortable environment for worship. So how do you be intentional about your background screening policy? There's Great. a couple of places to start. The first place to start is by being consistent with your background screening and having a church-wide policy. What we mean by that is to have a base level screening policy and package for all staff and volunteers the same. Now, there are some exceptions to this as well, though. So if you have, this is just an example, but if you have a volunteer that is going to be handling donation money, um, then you may want that person to have a credit check run on them to ensure that they've been responsible with finances in the past. Um, or another example would be someone that is in the nursery or vacation Bible school working with kids, then an important search there would be the sex offender registry search just to make sure that there's no history there that would cause some uh, terrible problems in the future. So those are some exceptions. Think about the role um, of, the, of the volunteer or the employee, but otherwise there should be a baseline screening package that's the same for everyone. The second thing is you'll want to ensure that you know what roles to screen for and what starts to do while being consistent. So kind of going back to what we just talked about with those examples. Um, and then lastly, it might not be considered a best practice necessarily to integrate your church management platform, but it's definitely a benefit and it helps make the whole process run much more smoothly and it's more effective and helps shave some time off the whole process for you so you can get back to what you're doing that, you know, some other important tasks. And this is something that Verified First can assist with. Absolutely, great information there. And I think I jumped ahead a moment, but we are ready for the next slide which is when to run a background check. So Veronica, you wanna keep uh, talking through this one? Yeah, yeah, thanks Steph. So 
When we think about the right times to run a background check, most organizations may think a one and done policy is enough, meaning I'm just gonna run one real quick, check that box, and we should be good. But what we know is that we never know ahead of time when someone commits a crime. So we strongly recommend a recurring screening policy to ensure the safety of your people and the environment. And a few examples of when to run a background check would include upon hire of a new staff member or volunteer, before a major season, such as the holidays, vacation Bible school, um, anytime when there's higher staff requirements or higher volunteer participation. Um, also, when someone changes their role or title and their, their responsibilities change. So again, an example is someone moved to a position handling money, you wanna make sure that they're responsible um, or you know, working with kids or at risk uh, demographics, then you wanna make sure that they can be trusted. Uh, another example would be if you host an event at a new venue, such as a school or a public park with children around, um, you know, depending on what that environment looks like and who they're going to be interacting with, you might want to run another check to make sure those people can be trusted. And lastly, if you haven't run a background check on someone in a while, again, this is where that one and done policy just doesn't quite cut it, and it may be time to run another background check. So having a recurring policy um, helps elevate the protection of your organization by ensuring that people are not getting into trouble after hire. That is some really great information there, Veronica. Um, to, to kind of expand a little bit further as well, and Veronica's already touched on some of these too, here's a list of some common background checks that we typically see uh, our church clients run. And to again, to, to echo what Veronica said earlier about being consistent, these are the, the searches that you really um, could be running uh, on your staff and volunteers that keep that consistency and that, that baseline package. And then you can go and add additional ones from there, such as let's say the, the consumer credit report would be for someone that would be handling you know, the church finances or even donations. Um, or you can add on a motor vehicle report. Maybe you have a volunteer that, that picks up the elderly every week and brings them to service. Um, but definitely having a, a same screening package for everybody at a minimum. And then again, depending on those positions, you may add some additional searches as well. Um, and then another pro tip that can help with consistency is to create packages in the platform that you're using for background screening. So every position um, you can create a package for, and then that way you can just simply choose the right searches and not having to go in and select the individual searches every time you need to order a background check. Um, it'll just reduce, you know, accidentally forgetting to run a particular check on somebody and having to go back in that process. So being able to utilize a solution that can help streamline the ordering process is, is really great to have as well. And make it so much easier. Yeah. So one search that we do wanna highlight is the abuse registry search. This is a statewide report and it pulls abuse and neglect records from a centralized database for those vulnerable groups. Each state that has this search will report on whether your volunteer, your applicant, or your staff member in that, is in that particular state's abuse registry or not. So really what the abuse registry do is they go beyond the criminal charges to help you find out more of the picture of that person. Um, since each state manages their registry themselves and we are just you know, requesting access to it, it's highly recommended that you review the requirement of your state and then consult legal counsel if you have any additional questions on, um, on this search a little bit further. We're, we're also here to help provide, um, answer any questions about this search, but since it, since it is very state specific, having some legal counsel handy would probably benefit you as well. And then um, another good practice to have is rescreening your staff and volunteers. Most organizations do it on an annual basis, but kind of going back to the background screening policy that you have set in place and sticking to that, you guys uh, can definitely choose what's going to be best for your church. So that could mean six months um, to you know a year. You could expand it out to, to two years. It's really up to you, but most often it's annual. And um, it also might be a good idea to do it when it's those non-busy times of year. So Veronica was mentioning definitely doing background checks at those peak season times. But then when it comes to rescreening, depending again on how many volunteers you have that you need to run a rescreen on, 
during those slower times of year may be a good time to do that on the annual basis. It's really encouraged to rescreen in order to have up-to-date records. Um, if someone has changed roles and responsibilities, that might be another good time. So if you didn't do it at the time of them changing it, then you can at least do it on the annual basis. And really it also helps you stay compliant because really the last thing we anybody wants to see is your church in a headline that's really gonna have a negative impact on your reputation. And then as you can see the stat on the right, 24% uh, of sex offenders will reoffend with violent and nonviolent crimes in their lifetime. So again, just kind of driving home that you did your due diligence in screening them when they first uh, rose their hand to serve, but also making sure you're re-screening them uh, on a continual basis is a really good best practice to have in your policy as well. That's a great call out. Nobody wants to be caught in the I didn't know situation, right? If something were to happen. And um, so having a rescreening policy does, I mean, it plays a huge part in mitigating risk and avoiding unfortunate situations. And I just can't imagine um, thinking about something happening that could have been avoided had we known, right? So um, really, really a big fan of, of a rescreening policy. Yep, I couldn't agree with you more. So we have given a ton of great information already. Um, and so you're probably ready to, uh, hopefully ready to dive into your background screening policies and procedures to maybe either start from scratch or revamp it. So kind of let's see where you can start. Yeah, so when you're thinking about starting a new screening policy, um, I think one of the things to really hone in is thinking about the role and the associated responsibilities of that role and let that assist you in determining who needs to be screened and what types of screens should be run on that position. Think about what the rules are for who you hire and what you're willing to accept in someone's background and also what is considered a hard no. So define those screening rules and, ex and exceptions. Um, make sure that you're staying compliant with FCRA regulations, which is something Verified First can help with, answer questions around what those regulations are but it's really important to ensure that everyone is being treated fairly and also that you're just abiding by those regulations that the FCRA put in place. Um, this one, number five, is, is I think a pretty popular one too, is integrating your background screening into your church management solution. Doing this, again, it's, it's not necessarily a requirement or anything, but it's somewhat of a no-brainer, right? It helps create a smoother and more effective hiring process and it accelerates the time for you to fill a position. So if you need someone immediately, you don't want to be bouncing back and forth between two different portals and you got information here and then here and you're trying to put it all together. Having it integrated helps keep everything in one place so it's easy to view, it's easy to run through the process, and then you're on your way to filling that position. And then lastly, uh, you just make the call. So now that you have information on this person who has applied to be a volunteer or a staff member with your church, it's time to think about, okay, I have this information in front of me. Do I feel like they're a good fit? Can I trust them? Do I feel like they're gonna help support our purpose here? And if so, then great, let's move forward in the process. And if not, then you know there's, there's some other steps to take there if you find some information that goes against your criteria, but otherwise, uh, at least you have that information and can make a well-informed decision. Uh, as an integrated partner of Ministry Platform, Verified First can, again, support you in every step of the way with this process. And so now we'll go just kind of into some added benefits of the, uh, the Verified First solution as well. Can we go to the next slide, Stephanie? Yeah, Thank there you. we go. Mm -hmm. So here's a few additional things to consider um, when thinking about our solution within Ministry Platform. Uh, for one, you do not have to pay any extra fees to integrate Verified First into Ministry Platform. It's super easy to do, um, it, it's, it's easy to implement, and you get a consolidated experience launching a background check from beginning to end all within one platform, which is huge. Um, one call out that we love to make is we are PBSA accredited. Uh, we're a consumer reporting agency, which is a fancy word for a background check provider, and that accreditation is, is um, really important to our industry. And we also have very strict security protocols to make sure information is kept safe, but we also have flexible customization features to make sure that you can have this set up the way that you want to, to make it feel like it's just custom to you and your process. Um, our technology is designed to work for you as well and, and whatever your needs are. So that includes 
um, giving you status updates on your background checks. We give you the ability to customize screening packages on the fly, which a lot of times can save time if you need to you know, change something or create a new package for a new role. You can do that all within the system. And we also have texting capabilities to help streamline communication and get to those candidates a lot faster and get through the process quicker so that they can get hired and get going for you. And then last but certainly not least, we want to support you. We strive for and are awarded for our world-class customer support. Um, our goal is really to ensure that you can quickly and confidently hire the right people to support your organization and your overall purpose. So with all that being said, uh, I think we're all ready to see what this powerful technology looks like in action. Yes, definitely. Uh, one, one quick pause, though. It's a little bit good little teaser there. We do have one more poll question for you guys. So let me, uh, let me get this one teed up for you here. And it says, uh, how do you feel about your current background screening solution? Now that we've given you all of this information, we're hoping it's getting your wheels spinning on, you know, I do currently have one, but, you know, is there improvements to be made and things like that? So we'll give everybody just a few moments to reply to this question. And we do appreciate your participation as well. So we want to take a random guess, Veronica, what you think the top response would be? I don't know. This is a tough one. I, I'm probably going to say that the most popular response will be pretty good, um, considering what everyone's maybe baseline knowledge is ahead of this. Um, would love to know in, in the chat if anyone has any call outs about what they do like about their current solution or what they feel like they, it could be improved on. Um, that's always a, a great thing to dive deeper into. But yeah, my bet's going to be probably pretty good. Okay, well, let's uh, let's share these results. I know we didn't share the last one, but let's share this one. So, all right, you were right on the money. Everybody's saying pretty good. Um, we do have um, some that don't integrate, so uh, that's okay as long as you're getting those background checks done. But if you're interested in, in having a, a benefit of the integration, um, mm -hmm. we're more than happy to talk to you about that as well. Um, and then some people are also looking for a new one too. So pretty pretty widespread results as well. So that's yeah. wonderful to hear from you guys. And uh, again, we do appreciate you guys participating. So yeah. without further ado, let's see how it works. Uh, one quick um, addition to the integration piece is that we actually do have two different types of integration within the ministry platform system. Uh, one of them we refer to as a web browser extension, and that's where you can essentially just uh, download that extension on your computer, that one is free as well. And you can quickly and easily set up the integration. We do also have a traditional API integration within that platform as well, which is what I'm gonna demo for you guys here today. But um, if you are interested in seeing what that extension integration looks like in comparison to what we show you today, we're more than happy to show you both and what the benefits are of both of those. Um, that way, you, know, you can make the best choice for, for your process as well. So let's see here. What you're gonna do um, when you get into ministry platform is you're going to go to the contact section and then under the uh, tools feature, you're then going to choose from the drop down, um, select background check, it's a new background check. Um, and then from here, the background check type is going to be that package and you can select the requesting ministry that that person is volunteering or applying for. And then you have the ability to add some additional notes as well, especially if uh, multiple people are going to need to know um, what to do with this particular individual. And then our demo environment takes a little longer, but it should be a little bit quicker for you. You'll get a notification that the um, background check has started. And what that's going to do is it's going to send off an email to the individual. So you can check here that the background check has been started. And then uh, we'll walk you through what it's gonna look like from that individual's perspective. We often refer to this as like the applicant um, packet because what they're going to do um, is fill in um, some bit additional information needed for the background check. They're also going to just sign all the necessary forms in order for us to actually conduct the background check on your behalf. Um, so this one is uh, just giving consent uh, electronically 
that the background check can be done. This also allows them to jump back into the packet. So if they get interrupted in the middle of filling it out, uh, they can jump back in and, and pick up where they left off. This is asking for them to confirm the state that they live in. This is because some states require some additional uh, forms to be filled out before the background check can get ran. So our system can, can grab those forms and include it as well. Copy of the FCRA, they're just acknowledging that they received a copy of that. Uh, this is uh, also acknowledging that the you know, information on them can get disclosed, um, that they can get a copy of their consumer report, and then finally acknowledging and authorizing the background check. And then this page here is uh, asking for the additional information that we'll need in order to confirm that person um, and see if there are records on them. So it'll be things like social and date of birth are the two pieces of, of information really needed on this screen. Um, and then the next one is going to ask for their address. This is really helpful if you guys are ordering a criminal background check where we have to go to a county, we will pull the county based off this address um, and see if there's records on that individual. So that way you guys don't have to collect all of this information ahead of time. It probably is in your platform, but if for some reason it's not, you don't have to worry about filling it in yourself. And then the last screen is just confirming all that information is correct. And so once it's submitted, then we will actually start processing the background check since we have everything that we need there. And then you can also um, go back obviously into ministry platform because that's where you started the background check. You're going to be able to review the background check as well within that system. So once it's all done, you'd go back to that individual and there will be a report URL link there for you that you can click on and then um, view the reports that way as well. So you're not having to, to necessarily log in separately as Veronica was saying, go here, go there to get everything. You can click on that link, it'll jump you into being able to view the report and say that you know information looks good and is approved. It will also then record that back into ministry platform as well. You can see um, once we refresh here, there is a, an all clear status. So that way, again, if you have multiple people helping with um, volunteers and, and choosing those right individuals, they can see from that status, the background check has already been done and it is all clear and they're ready to go move on to the next step in, their, in the volunteer process. So that was a little quick and, and, and kind of high level. Um, if anybody does have questions further, you know, on the functionality of that, we're happy to answer those questions for you as well. Um, but that was the uh, the API demonstration. And again, the um, the extension integration that we have as well is very seamless. Um, the experience for the applicant is still the same. They'll get that packet. And then for you as the person requesting the background check, just a few um, few quick clicks that you would need to do as well to actually kick that off. So excited that we can offer a couple different options for you guys. Very cool. Love to see that in action. And again, having it all in one place, I think is just a huge headache saver. I agree. Yeah. And we've we've had some great feedback um, from our clients that are that use really both types of integrations as well. Mm -hmm. So let's uh, let's take a peek here. I know we uh, we did. I don't think we had any questions up until this point, but it looks like we do have a few um, questions. So um, I'll go ahead and take the first one. Um, first one is asking, what does implementation look like? Which is a great great question. Um, you know, there is going to be a time period of um, us gathering all the necessary information in order to create your ordering portal and get the connection set up in the ministry platform. But typically once we let our portal team know that we have a new client that's ready to start ordering, the um, account will get set up on anywhere from around, usually around two to three business days. And then someone from our implementation team will reach out to you to conduct training. And depending on schedules and aligning calendars, um, that could take you know, anywhere from a few days to maybe a week, but our implementation team um, is really good about reaching out right away and trying to get um, a training scheduled as quickly as possible. There are some steps that you guys can do um, ahead of time as well. 
by um, setting some things up in ministry platform so the integration can actually function properly. Uh, ministry platform has some really great KB articles that will help you um, set up the information in there, get everything you need. So then once you do get the training done, the integration is, is fully ready to go and you can start ordering some background checks right away. So I would say on average from the time that we, we get your portal set up and training and everything, um, could probably be about a week's time frame, but we usually do see it a little bit shorter as well. So hopefully that helps give you a good idea too. Awesome. I think that answered a couple of questions in there too. Like what is um, what does the timeline, timeline look like for integrating? Um, I know with the extension, if you were to download the, uh, the browser extension to integrate Verified First with Ministry Platform, let's say you're already a customer of ours and a customer of Ministry Platform, then integrating via the browser extension, you can literally do in less than a minute. Um, again, just a couple of clicks to download the extension to your browser, which most people are familiar with these days. It's similar to downloading an app on your phone from the App Store. And then uh, that's pretty much it. You log into your system, you log into Ministry Platform, it kind of identifies the two, and then you're ready to go and, and off to the races with the extension. Um, Stephanie, do you know what input or what that timeline looks like for the API? Uh, the API you can get set up pretty quickly. Um, the, it just the difference with that. So like the extension, you have full control of like, okay, I, I'm downloading this piece and, and the integration is essentially ready to go right away. But because we need both platforms to talk to each other um, through the API, there are, there are some uh, kind of setup pieces that need to be done within ministry platform. And then that information needs to get relayed over to us. Um, then that's where the implementation rep will say, okay, here's the pieces of information I need from you we'll plug it into the portal and then get the integration going. So it's still very quick, but um, there is a little bit more more work, I guess, or um, for the client to, to help give us the information that we need. Sure. Um, yeah. I think APIs are known for having a little bit of configuration required in there. So exactly. Um, yeah. We try, we try and make it as, as, as easy as possible. Um, I believe the implementation team will even uh, send out an email ahead of time calling out. These are the pieces of information that you'll need handy um, before we do the training. That way it can just help speed up the process and everything as well. So mm -hmm. um, we didn't get this question, but it's usually a popular question. So I'll just kind of ask it for the group. Uh, what is a background check cost? Um, and the way that we have our pricing model is uh, we will charge per service. So we talked about packages earlier and the benefit of having multiple searches within a package. That's more or less for uh, like the convenience of you not having to select several different searches. It doesn't necessarily do like a price break, break of if you do these five things, it would be cheaper for you. Um, but we do we do take pricing into consideration with all of our clients, but especially churches and nonprofits as well. So we totally understand that cost is is um, very important to you and something that you guys do keep a close eye on just overall budgets and everything for your church so um, we will be we will will be as fair as we can on pricing we are pretty competitive in the market as well so um, we're, we're going to give you costs based off of the searches that you're looking for how often you think you're going to screen and then take into consideration that you know you are a, a nonprofit organization and and we'll tailor pricing specifically to you. So fortunately I don't have a dollar amount, but um, we've heard good things from those that, that have signed up with us as far as pricing goes. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And it looks like one last question that we had come in from a couple people was where do we offer background screening services and do we support international business? So um, I think the short and, and simple answer would be we offer screening services in North America, so U.S. and Canada, um, and then internationally we have, and correct me if I'm wrong, Steph, we do have uh, international searches available for companies that are based in the U.S. or Canada, but as far as supporting organizations that are located internationally, I think that's where um, that's where we don't really have a focus in that market just yet. Is that Would that be accurate? Yep, yep, you nailed it. Awesome. 
So hopefully that answered everyone's questions and thank you so much for, for sending those in to get more information about us and, and our services. Um, I think we I think we covered them all, Stephanie, unless you saw any others that we missed. I didn't, but I'll keep an eye on it in case uh, a question does come in last minute. But we also do have some ways you guys can get in touch with us later. So um, if a question does um, pop in your head later today, um, you can reach out to us um, at the email address listed there. Um, if anybody has their phone handy right now, I'll leave the screen up for a bit so you can scan the QR code if you'd like as well. Um, that's going to take you to a page to learn more about our partnership and integration with ACS Technologies. And again, that does include uh, the ministry platform system as well. And then there's a form on that page if you want to uh, speak to a background screening specialist further. Yeah, and also right when the webinar ends, you're gonna see a brief survey pop up on your screen. We would love your feedback on today's presentation, whether you found it helpful. Um, and of course, if you have any other questions or would like to be contacted by us, you can also indicate there that you'd like to learn more about us and, and have someone reach out to you. Yes, wonderful. So again, um, I wanna give a big thank you to Veronica for helping uh, with the presentation today. And thank you to all of you for attending today. We hope that uh, you enjoyed the presentation. And yes, we definitely would love to hear your feedback. And we just look forward to hearing from you um, if we can help you in any other way. Other than that, that's all we have for you guys today. And we hope you enjoy the rest of your week. Thanks, everyone.